about uh, arthroscopic consideration to address the joint hypermobility and hip instability. These my disclosures. Today's my content is uh, hip instability and joint hypermobilities, and uh, how to manage uh, capsular, uh, capsular uh, which is my favorite uh, procedures. And also, I'm going to talk about uh, hip dysplasia is joint hypermobility, which is the most difficult cases. So this slide is showing uh, uh, anatomical consideration of hip stabilities. The hip joint is ball and socket joint. It's stabilized by uh, the bony structures and the soft tissue, including the labrum and the capsular ligaments. And also, a muscle tendon can stabilize dynamically the, the hip joint. So hip instability is uh, now recognized as a broad spectrum of uh, conditions. And also, we mainly categorize uh, 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 three main categories, uh, joint hypermobilities and bony instability, uh, including hip dysplasia and uh, constant barriers and femoral torsions. And also, uh, recent uh, studies demonstrated uh, FAI is uh, associated with micro instabilities. Those three kind of uh, uh, conditions uh, uh, can considerable overlapping. So joint hypermobility syndrome is recognizing of common overlooked cause of chronic pains. There are three, uh, uh, two uh, main factors. The genetic factors consist of uh, TNXP coding or the uh, extracellular <coughs> matrix glycoproteins and tansins and X and Marfan syndromes and Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and, syndromes and also, uh, Asian and Western Africans have a higher prevalence of uh, joint hypermobility than uh, Europeans. And also, your, uh, environment factors is consist of repeated microtraumas caused by uh, uh, sports activities, and also they have uh, multiple joint ligament injuries. And also, they com complain uh, to chronic pains, uh, which is caused by uh, muscular tendon structure can be uh, which can, can be compensated with specific uh, uh, overload problems. That can cause uh, nerve uh, compression, uh, which can cause result in uh, dis dysfunction and chronic pains. And also, uh, specific uh, spastic uh, muscle tendon junctions can cause chronic pain. So those <coughs> unexplained pain and dysfunctions can cause uh, anxiety and uh, dis the, the depressions. That's why we have to uh, consider the, uh, taking patient history and the psychological screening is uh, really important. So how to diagnose the joint hypermobility is uh, uh, Baton score is uh, can only document the degree of the hypermobilities. And also a uh, physical examination is really important but uh, <coughs> yesterday's uh, Dr. Chak uh, talked a lot about uh, uh, physical examination uh, that's why I skip a little bit, and also uh, MRI arthrogram is useful to assess the poor capsular conditions, uh, including capsular redundant rupture or defect after capsular releasing approaches. And also, yesterday's previous speakers uh, talked about uh, uh, capsular re repair is uh, really recommended. And uh, this is my uh, favorite procedure because in Japan uh, we have a uh, lot of uh, uh, joint laxity uh, patients. That's why I, uh, even though the complete capsular corrosion program uh, they underwent, uh, even though they underwent uh, capsular complete capsular, but some of them uh, the failed the hip arthroscopy. That's why I create a device uh, this kind of uh, uh, capsular application procedures. So we utilize the body tapes uh, uh, from Smith and Nephew, and uh, this advantage is uh, precate both axial and perpendicular directions, and also scope or usually scope placed outside and inside uh, for better visualization and understanding of the surrounding uh, structures. Uh, this is a safety. A 47 years old female patient with borderline dysplasia, the level of TS, and the joint hypermobility, beta scores a 7 point, and the lateral tension of 24 degrees. And you can see the level, 
you can see the uh, uh, MRI showing the extensive level tear and cartilage damage are those associated with a stable bone or the edema patterns. Uh, this is a not a good indication of our hip arthroscopy. But I, what I did is uh, I performed uh, double shoelace techniques, uh, which is uh, utilizing uh, two pieces of ultra tape for treating uh, a borderline dysplasia with capsular laxity. I started to perform the shoelace capsular closure uh, from anterior medial, and also on the second, uh, from, uh, I started to perform. Uh, uh, First laterally and then both close together to for more secure uh, application. A post X-ray and MRI at so one year after surgery showing uh, lateral fetal improved from 24 degrees to 26 degrees and what uh, PRO score significantly improved and the MRI showing uh, cartilage is good to healing. And also uh, how to assess a hip dysplasia. Uh, pelvic APPU and force provide, we, we have to measure uh, large graphic parameter, including uh, lateral sensation, sharp angle, torso <coughs> angle, and also uh, shadow line block and femoral stick shaft angle. And also, uh, on force provide views, of vertical center edge angle it should be uh, measured. Uh, this is our study is looking at the predictor for poor critical outcomes after arthroscopic level repairs, uh, capsule application of camoceplasty in the setting of borderline dysplasia. Borderline dysplasia is defined as a, a, a lateral center angle 20 to 25 degrees. Uh, what we found is 11 of 45 patients to fail initial hip arthroscopies. Uh, predictor for worse critical outcomes were uh, age older than 42, broken central lines, and tons of great uh, one or two, and severe cartilage damage, and tons of angle greater than 15 degrees, and VCA angle less than 17 degrees, which means suggesting uh, anterior shallow socket. So <coughs> those patients should not be performed, uh, hip arthroscopy should not be performed for those patients. So we realize isolated hip arthroscopy procedure is still really limited because it does not solve the problems. So we devise uh, endoscopic shelfastoplasty. Shelfastoplasty is a technique for acetabular reconstruction for treating hip dysplasia. So this uh, parallel drill guide of a cannulated bone tamp dilator, of which is developed by, produced by uh, Smith and nephew. We harvested the bone uh, graft from iliac crest, and then 30 degree scope was utilized to uh, outside the capsule, and then uh, we, we put the parallel dorial guide to for at least four. Uh, it depends on the, uh, the it depends on the how much graft is, and then uh, we put the graft uh, into the position by press fitting by tap, 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 tapping uh, utilized the cannulated bone taps. And uh, afterwards, uh, another graft uh, puts the uh, above the uh, shelf graft to support support uh, the shelf graft. So what we found is uh, this is a study uh, looking at clinical outcome for endoscopic shelf astroplasty for treating the patient active patient. Uh, 36 hips met inclusion criteria, average is 28. Uh, PR scores significantly improved. 90% of the patient return to pre-injury activity level. So this is a really difficult case. Uh, it's a hip dysplasia, lateral set edge of 17 degrees, uh, rhythmic stiffness, 19 years old female, beta scores a seven point. Uh, he, his, her problem is a hip dysplasia, so uh, x-ray showing uh, astabular rib fractures, and also MRI showing as OCD region of the astabular and the labrum tears, and the joint hyper mobilities. What we did is, uh, first we performed the central compartment procedures, <laughs> uh, labrum repairs, and also I fixed the uh, uh, fragment uh, using uh, HA periods, rated pins, this is uh, uh, created for uh, endoscopic procedures, and also surely capsule application was, was performed after uh, chemoceplasty. And then, uh, finally, shelf graft was inserted just above the fragment and OCD region area to support acetabular rib fracture and stimulate the healing process of the cheese regions. 
So post different x ray and CT scans showing a good position of the uh, uh, shape graph just above the acetabular uh, limb structures. And at six months after surgery, uh, it's a good healing, and also MRI showing a uh, good healing of the acetabular limb structures. At 10 months after surgery, uh, she can uh, return to complete rhythmic uh, uh, <coughs> gymnast activity level without any discomfort. In conclusion, a capsule application technique such as a shoelace application is useful in the treatment for the patient with joint hypermobility in the hip instabilities. <coughs> and endoscopic shell plastic combined with shoelace capsule application is less invasive and could provide a better clinical outcome for the athlete in the setting of dysplasia and joint hypermobility. Uh, this is uh, the advertising, uh, advertising slide, uh, the second Asian Society of Hip and Speak Annual Congress, uh, which uh, will be held in Kita uh, Kyushu, Fukuoka, Japan, uh, which is supported, approved by ESHA. Uh, if you are interested, uh, uh, please join us and looking forward to seeing you. Thank you very much for your attention.